Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This video marks the start of an exciting journey of self-hosting and home labs. This is the very first video where we'll see how we can host our own Linux server. This will be our foundation where we can host many other open source services like Jellyfin, book libraries, notes app and much more. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back. Before moving in, I would like to tell you I'm just a beginner in this genre. I've recently worked in the world of self-hosting. One of the major reasons for this is that today the big tech companies are racing to make better AI and today is more important than ever that we need to save our own data. And because of this reason, I feel protecting my data is very important for me. What do you mean by that? For example, I have tons of images, videos and stuffs on my Google Photos and who knows if someday Google decides to train models on my media. And also I've been using Notion for around 5 years now. I have lots of my personal information on it. So what if Notion is secretly training my personal data to its AI models? You never know, right? So self-hosting can save you a lot of money and also protect your data. So because of this reason, protecting data is more important than ever at this moment. I have an old MacBook Air M1, so in this video I'll show you how you can create your own self-hosted Linux server. You'll be needing a virtualization software called UTM. This is a very popular for macOS. You can get it from this website. I have already downloaded it, so I won't do it again. And also we will need Ubuntu server ISO ARM. Right, so as macOS, Apple Silicon are ARM based architecture, so we will need an ARM ISO. So, this is how you can download the ISO. I've already downloaded it. Let me show you. This is my ISO file, and also I've already installed UTM. So, let's begin. We need to create a new virtual machine and click on virtualize, then Linux. Here, we need to select our ISO file, which is right here. You can allocate memory, this is basically the RAM and I'll allocate 8 cores of CPU. Well this depends on your system configuration and how much you want to give it to your virtual machine. And is a storage, basically I will keep it to 64. I would suggest you to use an external SSD or hard drive or maybe a pen drive to you know extend this to at least 200 gigs. Right, so that you'll be able to, you know, host your photos, notes, books. Now let's just hit continue. And this is the path where you want to set up shared folder basically, which will be accessible to macOS and also your Linux server. This will be helpful for sharing files between these two OSs. Now we'll just give it a name Ubuntu Server. All right. Now we can see specs here. Architecture is ARM64. Memory is 8 gigs. Size is 528 KB, which will be increased once we install the server, right? And this is our shared directory. You can change it from here as well if you want. And we have mounted our ISO file. Then we can just double click on it. Now we need to click on install Ubuntu server. This is to choose your language. Installer. A new updated installer is available. You can go for updating, but I'll just go with without updating. This is the keyboard layout. We don't need to change anything in here as well. This is also for the network card. It has selected the default network, so we don't need to change anything in here as well. So we'll hit done. We don't need proxy address. We don't need to change in the this address as well. Then hit continue. We don't need to change anything in the disk as well. So the main OS files will go in here, boot and EFI. All right. These are the system, um, you can say, partitions. And after taking these two around three gigs of RAM, three gigs of storage, in fact, your virtual disk will have 61 gigs left, out of which 30 gigs will be free space, which is unallocated space, basically. So later you can extend your 30 gigs to more 30 gigs, which will be around 60 gigs. So that is the total configuration of your disk right now. These things can be changed uh, if you are having free space, right? So we don't need to change anything here at the moment. We can do that after we've installed the server. Now that said, let's continue. We'll give a name. Server name is basically uh, the name that uh, you will see when you log into uh, this system 
from something else let's say uh, like i have this macbook uh, and i want to ssh into it then i'll see agile coder as my name and this username is basically the uh, name that I'll be using to log into the system. Basically, the server will have a name and me as a user will have a name which we will use to log into the system. That's it. I don't want Ubuntu Pro. Yes, you will need OpenSSH because uh, you will eventually you know do ssh into this system for controlling it and i would suggest you to install docker as well which is very handy to install services which you will see in a minute now we just have to wait for the installation to get completed 15 minutes later yeah so now it's installed so let's reboot and yeah before rebooting we need to do one thing we need to clear our mount so it doesn't show us to install it again and then we can double click on it yeah so this is where you know we'll enter our username and password right so we have our server up and running right now all right so now we can use this IP address 192.168.64.5 to log into the system from other devices in the same network and I repeat this has to be in the same network because you know uh, this IP address that you are seeing is uh, IP address inside your local network and not on the internet itself so you can just you know SSH smurify which is your username right at the red 192.64.5 yes password so we have it we have successfully installed our linux server right and we can access this thing from any other device on the same network if your isp provides you with a static ip then you can uh, use it otherwise you won't be able to host your linux server to the internet most of the domestic ISP providers which are uh, giving internet to individuals or home networks they usually uh, are uh, under CGNet which is basically they have a network on top of our network which is then connected to the internet so we don't have a static IP but what you can do is you can contact it contact with your ISP and they take some uh, minimal fees, I think, to give you a static IP and then you'll be able to, you know, port forward Linux server. So I have done some settings and stuff which I'll show you. I have uh, another Linux server hosted on my other machine which is constantly running 24-7 and I can log into the system by this. I have hosted it on host.agilecoder.in, right? So. I can use this device from anywhere around the world. It is connected to the internet. So this is my hosted Linux server basically. And with this, I have hosted a lot of services. For example, portainer.agilecoder.in, which is my container service. And using this, I have deployed a lot of services. Like I have Coolify, Jellyfin, Keyclock, Mini.io. So this is my Nginx proxy manager. So I have uh, reverse proxy these services so basically some of them are for development purposes I'm a software engineer so I try out different stuffs in this server and also I have self-hosted some of the things I've been recently self-hosted a notes application basically right so uh, this is basically a clone of notion but open source and my data stays with me on my hard drive so this is the most safest way to you know uh, do note taking and stuff like that hosted jellyfin.agilecoder.in which is a multimedia streaming platform basically rancher is for kubernetes then min.io is like an alternative open source alternative to aws s3 right coolify is like Versal, Heroku and Netlify. You can host your applications here. Even in Portainer, you have lots of applications to self-host and it's super easy. I'll create a video on this. Just make sure to subscribe, all right? You can host a Ghost instance, basically. Ghost is an open source CMS, basically. So these are the services I have currently hosted and OIDC is a OpenID Connect server. So this is all that I have been doing so far. We'll be making, you know, chunks of videos along the way. So that was all for this video. If you enjoyed watching and gained some information, then be sure to like this video and subscribe. There are a lot of 
videos coming on self host and also i'll be continuing the node.js series as well I'll, i'll be uploading soon so that's all see you guys in the next one peace